With Kubernetes and AKS, we can expose services publicly or internally using the ingress controller, like Nginx or Application Gateway for containers. But for some organizations, they require to use API management, maybe because they have other kind of Azure services like Azure App Service or Functions, and they want to use one single centralized API management solution like Azure API Management in order to give their users and their customers access to their services. This means now they are required to put an Azure API Management in front of the AKS cluster. This could be done with multiple options. Let's explore those options. The easiest option would be to use a public instance of Azure API Management. And because it's public, it's not injected into the cluster VNet, so it doesn't have private access to the resources of the cluster. For that, it will require to expose the AKS services as public endpoint through the load balancer. It means that each service of the cluster will be exposed through a public IP address. This simple solution is not really secure because if you expose publicly those all of your services for the API management, then they are exposed over the internet. Is there a more secure solution? Yes, we do. So first of all, we'll explore the ingress controller within Kubernetes or within AKS. And with that, we would have one single entry point for all of the services inside the cluster. And that ingress controller could be exposed either publicly or in our case here, it will be exposed privately through a private IP within the cluster VNet. And then for the API management, we can create an internal or even an external API management resource that will be injected into the cluster VNet. It means that that API management will have access to the endpoint that is exposed through the ingress controller. With that way, we can configure our services to use HTTP or even better HTTPS with MTLS. And the only endpoint that will be exposed to our users is the one exposed by the API management. Follow me in the next video to see a demo on how this works on Azure. In this demonstration, you'll learn how to expose AKS services using API management. For that, we'll go to deploy an AKS cluster with app routing add-on enabled in order to use the Nginx managed Nginx ingress controller. And then we'll deploy an API management with the developer SQ. And then we'll go to deploy all of these resources within a virtual network. And then we'll create an NSG that will allow the required inbound and outbound traffic for the API management instance. And at the end, we'll go to create an API definition within the Azure API management in order to expose the the AKS service through the ingress controller. This is a lab and all the steps required are documented within this GitHub repository that is Docker Kubernetes course, the course number 230, where you will find the readme file that will detail uh, the architecture that will go through and then all the steps in order to deploy these resources. So let's start here first by creating the AKS cluster and then exposing our services through the ingress controller. To create all of these resources, we'll rely on a Terraform. And the Terraform template could be found within the Terraform folder right here. I can see that from my VS code. So first of all, we'll go to deploy the AKS uh, cluster, and then we'll go to enable the web app routing. We don't need a DNS zone here, so I put the value for null. And at the same time, we'll go to also deploy the API management. So we create a public IP for that API management, and then we create the API management itself using the developer SQ, which is the cheapest uh, SQ that will allow you to inject your API management within VNet. That VNet is the one available here. So where we have two subnets, a subnet for the AKS cluster and another subnet for the API management. To deploy these resources, you need to use the Terraform command. So Terraform init first, and then Terraform apply with dash auto approve. And then Terraform will tell you what are the resources that he will create and then he will proceed to the creation of the resources. So at the end, we should have an output like this, where we should have the API URL. So at this time, we should have our AKS cluster already created. So then we should connect to that cluster. I have done that through Terraform, uh, Terraform data resource here. So I run the command az aks get credentials, the name and the resource group name of my AKS cluster. So with that, I'm ready here to do cube control get nodes of my cluster. I can see the three nodes and then I'm ready to deploy some applications into my cluster. I have some apps here in YAML, Kubernetes YAML files. 
First of all, I have this app.yaml where here I go to create a new namespace called Web API, and then I create a deployment with the three replica. Here I'll be using Docker container hosted within GitHub container registry. This one will expose Web API through a REST endpoint. It will return uh, JSON data on GET operation. It will run on port number 300,500, and then I create a service that will target that port number and exposing it through the port 80. Let's deploy that application using kubectl apply dash f, then the name of that YAML file. The resource is created, so I can check them if I do kubectl get all dash n web API. And here I see the created uh, resources, the three pods, the service, and the deployment. Great, now we want to expose this service through Ingress resource. So because in our AKS cluster we have enabled application routing, so now we should be able to create or to provision an Ingress controller. So let's do that. With app routing, we can create a new Ingress Nginx Managed Ingress Controller resource using this YAML file right here, where we should specify an Ingress class name, a controller name prefix, and then for loud load balancer uh, annotations, you can say that you want to create a private or internal load balancer by setting this annotation to true, and then you can also specify a static IP address for your load balancer. Not, not this private IP, because we'll use it later to connect API management to the services exposed by, the, by this ingress controller. So let's run this file or this configuration. So again, I'll do here kubectl apply dash f, then the name of the file. And here it tells me that the nginx internal static was created. I can check again its creation by kubectl get the name of the resource. And here, yes, I see it running. So you see one already created by the uh, app routing it was created by default it's called it default and this one will expose services publicly but the one that we have created is this one nginx internal stack ingress uh, controller so now let's go to expose our service through this managed ingress controller to do that we'll use here this uh, ingress resource that will expose our service on port 80 that lives within the web api namespace and it will use for the ingress class name the nginx internal static the one that we have created so let's go to deploy that file kubectl apply dash f again and then the name of the file and here it tells me it was created successfully let's check with kubectl get ingress and then the namespace and here we can see that it's created, but it doesn't have an address yet. So this means that for now, the internal load balancer is being created. So let's watch for the creation of this resource by adding dash W. This will take a few seconds. And after a few seconds, we can see that here, the IP address was popped up. That was the static IP address that we have specified in our YAML file. Go to the Azure resources. Then if you go to the managed cluster resource group right here that contains the backend resources for the cluster, we can see that here we have now an internal load balancer. If I click on it, I can see that within the front-end IP configuration, exposed through this private IP address within my cluster subnet. And within the backend pools, we can see that here it will point to the three nodes of my cluster. Great, let's test now that the web API is exposed correctly. So for that, I'll go to create a sample Nginx container, and then I'll go to exec into that Nginx container. And from inside, I'll go to curl that private IP address on the endpoint or on the URL albums. I know that my web service is exposed through the endpoint or through the URL albums. So I'll add here slash albums. There. And here, yes, we get this JSON file, which contains a list of uh, albums. Great. Now let's go to expose this ingress or this service through the API management. So we have already created the API management and then within the API management API here, we'll go to create a new API. Actually, you can do this either through the Azure portal or through Terraform. I have done it through Terraform for automation. And all we need to do here is just add a new API. We call it API albums. It will expose the service URL, which is the endpoint for the ingress controller slash albums. And here I disable the subscription uh, required for testing just to make it easier to test my service. And then I'll expose an operation, which is the get operation, the only operation that is supported for my container.
So my API management is able to access this private IP address because at the end it's injected into the virtual network of the cluster. So note here within the API management configuration, we have this virtual network configuration. Here it's injected into the subnet of the API management, which is inside the same VNet of the cluster. Let's see this in the Azure portal. So if I go to my main resource group, I would see my AKS cluster, and then I would see here the API management instance. If I go there, then I can see the gateway URL that will expose services from within this API management. And if I go navigate to the APIs, then from here, I would see the API created by Terraform, which is called API albums. And you can see the get operation. If I navigate to the settings, you can see here the settings of this API. So it will point to the endpoint of the ingress and it will use HTTP or HTTPS. Now we can test this service from the API management itself. If I, if I click here on test and then if I click send, this will send an HTTP request to this endpoint for API management. And here I get the response, which is here a JSON file coming from my container exposed in AKS cluster through the ingress resource. And I can run the same URL here from my browser. So if I copy this and then go to my browser, paste it there, I would see the same uh, JSON file. So it's now exposed publicly on API management, but the service itself within AKS is private. And that was how to expose AKS resources using Azure API management. Thank you.